should have been a business. It may be his holiday, but it's no less serious a business. If one comes to work, then one's got to take a proper turn and do somebody's work right through, through the shift. You can't expect people to come on first thing in the morning, put everything ready, just for you to step onto the footplate and, uh, uh, and do the easy stuff. So you've really got to take somebody's place and do the whole job, otherwise it's not a fair deal, is it? This is no part-time railway. For the people who live and work along the valley from Yenbach here on the main line, up to the terminus at Meyerhofen, the Zilla is as important as any intercity express. Freight is transferred, wagons and all, from Austrian state railways onto its two-foot private track. Unlike its nationalised neighbour that needs millions of shillings in subsidy every year, this line just about breaks even with a little help from its friends. If you hate railway museums with all those lifeless, frozen exhibits, then this is the place to come. Here they don't worship steam engines. It's just good sense to attract thousands of railway collectors every year. It makes the balance sheet look healthier. They leave it to us to be romantic. It's an interlude we can recapture in our holiday snaps. But we'll have to keep travelling. The Zilla is a gem, but it doesn't have proper steam engines. You know, big ones on mainline trains. Can I have some more film, please, Steve? Perhaps we'll find those where the Transalpine is taking us.
We settle down for the tail end of our journey. Woken up by the shunting at Rosenheim as we run into Germany for a few kilometers. Snoozing again by the time we get to Salzburg. Charting our position by glimpses of passing stations and the clock in our stomachs. We want to point out that there is a restaurant car in this train and we ask you to kindly take advantage of this service. The direction to the restaurant car is indicated by an illuminated arrow in the corridor of your coach. Thank you. Should we thank the lady who tempts us to the dining car? Where does she go between announcements? Meine Damen und Herren, Schnellzug 249 von Sarganz über Innsbruck, Kitzbühel und Zell am See mit Kurswagen von Kehl über Stuttgart und München fährt ein. Bitte Vorsicht. Tonight, Chris Lohner will already be back at her proper job, announcing on Austrian television. Her calls to dinner and welcoming arrivals are sadly nothing more than cassettes. It started out very funny because somebody asked me if I could do the announcement in English, French and German for the Transalpine and that was it. And I thought that was it too. But actually, it was the beginning of a whole lot of work and now I end up doing all the announcement for the Austrian railways. And I really enjoyed it. It's a complete different work from what I do. You know, usually I work on television, I talk in the radio, where there is much more personal engagement in it. I mean, you don't engage yourself by doing an announcement when the train leaves or arrives. I mean, you don't show any feelings or you are happy or unhappy. I mean, actually it doesn't matter. You just stick to the text and you do it as it is being asked from you, you know. Wir treffen in Kürze in Wien ein. We will arrive in Vienna in a few minutes. Nous arriverons dans quelques minutes à Vienne. It's everything we expected Vienna to be. Good food and tasteful music. A little restaurant up in the woods somewhere. Except it's the station Kaff. We won't find many railway pie jokes on the Westbahnhof. Here the station is more than somewhere to depart from as quickly as possible. It's a place to eat and meet by choice rather than necessity. But once, you could have looked out from the platforms of the old Westbahnhof and seen that this was not a place of happy meetings. The train still came, as if life in Vienna was running on schedule. The Nazi Orient Express brought officials of the high command, and the next train to arrive on platform two carried the red star of occupation on its smoke box door. But whoever came, the people still died in the rubble, and the old world of pre-war railways died too, amid the ruins of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. The survivors of Europe put on a new face. There were new appointments to keep, but the old prestige expresses would no longer carry people to them. They were symbols of an age we wanted to forget. It's only with the distortion of memory that we smile a little and pretend they could have survived. Mind you, bits of those old trains do survive, after a fashion. Meine Damen und Herren, Expresszug 263, Orient Express, nach Bucharest, über Hegstrahlung. There's even a remnant of the Orient Express. 
a fallen woman of a train now. A grubby daily to Bucharest that scarcely justifies the honour of being called an express at all. Once the most capitalist of trains, it's now had its name pinched to boost the business on a cheap run to Romania. The routes that once echoed to first-class passenger traffic are now been usurped by freight. This is what brings prestige to the railways now. This is where profits grease the sliding away of national frontiers. Here today, hull tomorrow, in a roundabout of heavy haulage that leaves lorries standing and notches up one small advance in the battle with the airlines. It's the passengers that have been in retreat because people simply aren't as profitable, not a patch on containers. But if we pause for a moment in a corner of the Vienna Sudbahnhof, we can watch nervous preparation for the arrival of a special passenger train. The Chopin Express has found a role for itself across these borders of Eastern Europe. This is a train for poor people. Everyone here knows it as the emigrant train. Arriving at dawn each day from Moscow, the compartments of the Chopin carry among their passengers the flotsam of political repression. Little scenes from other people's lives. Carrying everything they own, these are the families and bits of families that count themselves lucky. Lucky to have got the exit visa, which allows them freedom after perhaps years of struggle. For these people, Vienna is the neutral stronghold, where the struggle stops. For us, it's a new start, too. A journey to the fringe of the world that they've left behind. Five days out from London, we're going to raise a corner of their curtain and slip across the frontier into Hungary. It can be a nervous moment, waiting for the train to leave. Will it be as sinister as preconceptions and imagination have told us? Is it significant that the Lehar Express is our 13th train? We'll know soon enough. There's just an hour of Austria left until we arrive at the checkpoint called Hegye Shalom. I suppose this is what we expected. Soldiers, guns, a search of the train while we're invited to change our money. Where are you going? Change money. Change money. Change money? Yeah. How much? How much uh, do we have to change? Thank you. Thank you. A change of engines, too. But at least this one brings a dining car with it.